in this age of social media, is radio still as popular or relevant as it was before now with all the YouTubes and all the other channels and platforms? And I think it's almost as, as much. I think it's, I think it's actually bigger now because people are still thinking in radio terms of like, well, if you don't have a million people watching, then you're not successful. But with places like YouTube and Twitch and uh, I don't know, there's a ton of other ones uh, that you can go to, you don't need a million people to watch you. You may only need 200 people to subscribe and actually make a living off of it. So now, instead of it being this broad thing, you've got to hit everything that everybody wants to talk about, people can now find specific things and genres that they're interested in. And I think it's actually improving it. As far as terrestrial radio, I don't think so. And I don't think it has anything to do, I think it has more to do with uh, the radio CEOs putting a ton of management in and not local uh, radio personalities, but that's my opinion. Tell me about the show you co-host. So I do a show with my husband, Brent Hatley. Um, it's called The Brent Hatley Show, it's on Twitch. And uh, it's two hours, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, to 8 p.m. and we talk about swinging, which we do a lot of. We're actually at our friends, our swinger friends' house uh, right now. We just got here and we're spending a three-day weekend with them. So we'll be talking all about this on Tuesday. Um, we talk about new music that comes out, mostly heavy metal and rock. We talk about partying and just crazy shit that we run into in Tampa and in St. Pete because a lot of people are locked down right now. And uh, in St. Pete, it's a, it's a little bit like 2019, to be honest. And there's still crazy shit going on. So, um, yeah, we spend two hours just talking about all that. And for a show like yours to be successful, does it have to be all crazy, shock, over-the-top stuff? Or do you find yourself so. a consistent uh, viewer, viewership? I don't um, think it has to be shocking at all times. And we do have a consistent viewership. In fact, I'd say the last few shows we talked about, we're fairly mild. Um, we get into interesting topics. A lot of times the chatters will uh, lead us into interesting topics. And we've been doing a little more of, uh, I'd say if, you, if one to 10 on the shock value, we've been doing a little bit more of a six or seven lately instead of all the way to 10. But Fridays are still gonna be nuts because it's our party show. We're doing beer funnels on Fridays. We do uh, shots. I mean, we get nuts on Friday, so that can still expect it to be wild every week. What for you do you think has been the craziest thing you did on the show? On Twitch? Yes. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, God, okay. We went to, it's like a, it's a, basically a permanent hotel takeover for swingers. So they bought this old hotel, this place called Secrets in Kissimmee bought this old hotel and converted it into a swingers place. It is fucking awesome. So we did one of our Friday shows from Secrets. And like everybody's nude, but obviously you can't be nude on Twitch. So we had to make sure we couldn't get anybody. But holy shit, we had the uh, promotions director of the place on the show with us. We ended up getting a three day suspension because the show got so fucking nuts. She had the bartender bringing us shots after shots. And she's touching her tits and her <laughs> pussy and telling us all sorts of fun shit. And although it was an amazing show, we did get suspended for three days from it. So I'm gonna have to go with that one, I think. Was was there ever anything you did on the show you felt you pushed it too far? No, not that I thought pushed it too far. Twitch, Amazon thought it pushed too far. I think we've been great, but Amazon, uh, we like to joke around that Bezos is cool with uh, having an affair on his wife, but God forbid I touch my boobies. When you did the original show, was there any type of concept behind it or did the show just develop into what it is now? We had an idea of what we wanted it to be, but uh, we've, like with everything in our life, and, and we, we plan things, but they always evolve. And if you don't evolve with it, like it's not gonna work. So so we're pretty flexible. We had ideas for it, but it has definitely evolved. We started with a uh, co-host. I wasn't even gonna be that big of a part of the show. We were just gonna have me in the corner 
uh, like Gary in the background being the executive producer. But now it's just Brett and I, and I'm, they, we call me the executive producer, but I'm basically the co-host as well. So it's, it's great. It's, it's evolved better than I thought it would actually. And where can people see it? So it's uh, twitch.tv forward slash Brent Hatley. And when you do your OnlyFans stuff, do you shoot stuff you think will sell or stuff for like your own fantasies you want to bring to life? So I always incorporate my own fantasies into it. What we, what I'm very proud of is I'm real. I'm not, uh, I don't pretend to be something I'm not. So I'm never going to say, uh, Hey daddy, I get that people like that. And that's totally cool. I would never call somebody daddy. So I'm not going to do it on OnlyFans. Also, I am not like a girly girl. I'm not going to be dressing in roughly shit. I'm going to be dressing in Doc Martin boots. I'm more of a dominant person. So I'm not going to pretend to be dominated when I prefer dominating. So I'm really trying to keep my personality in it. I also don't use filters. I use lighting. I have, I make sure the lighting's good, but I don't use filters. I just want to keep it as real as I possibly can. And do you find it with your OnlyFans, that is it more about personality or sex that makes it successful? I have to say a little bit of both. Um, definitely, I will always credit the Stern Show. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be doing this well on OnlyFans without the Stern Show. But I would love, to, I really want to get more of the sex industry who doesn't necessarily know me from the Stern Show. Like, I, I want all of it. I want that people are there because my personality and for sex, because I am a very sexual person. I really fucking do enjoy sex. And it, the few videos that I have done, I think that it has come through on that, that I enjoy, um, actually the, the act of having sex. And the clips that you do, are they just solos or do you do anything with other people? So I actually started this year. So the first of January, um, putting out video clips and I started, I think the first one I put out was like four minutes. The next one might be five minutes. Actually to, today, Friday, uh, January 15th, I'm putting out a sex clip. So it's actually going to be sex and not just me blowing somebody. And it's going to be the first one that I put out where I'm actually having sex. But even that, I think it's going to be about five minutes. I'm starting slow and then I'm going to get bigger ones. Hopefully. Will you be doing custom work? Yes. Yeah. So I do currently, I offer, um, a video with me playing with myself, uh, with just myself or with toys, uh, uh, or just a nude video, but I don't know if I know not in the near future, I won't be offering, uh, videos with sex acts with other people to purchase. Um, just because right now I'm still trying to build up uh, the male model that I have. I don't have somebody on call where I can say, Hey, come over. Somebody wants a video that I can I have sex with you real quick. But have you gotten any crazy requests for custom videos? Uh, I wouldn't call them crazy. I mean, they're just kinks, you know, and, um, I love kinks. I think they're awesome. I love learning about new kinks. I've had to Google how to do some videos. I'm that person that, if you're going to spend your hard earned money with me and you want a particular video and I'm not sure how to do that, I will watch at least five porns so that I have a good idea of what it is you're looking for. Um, so that you get what you want. I don't care if it's only 30 or $60, that's your 30 or $60. So I do research and I make sure I can do it, but it's just kinks. It's nothing crazy. I don't think. How did you get into swinging? Um, hmm. Brett and I, my husband, we were uh, a little intoxicated one day and we were walking down the street and I thought it'd be a great day to tell him that when I have sex with him, sometimes I fantasize about him having sex with another one. He goes, well, that's interesting. I was like, yeah. He goes, well, I'm having the same fantasies about you having sex with another guy. I go, really? Huh? So then we did some research on swinging. And, uh, I'd say like six months later, we started to dabble in it, a little soft swinging. 
and then it's just went on from there. And how has COVID impacted all of that? Not Swimming. much. <laughs> um, barely all. Well, I'd say after June, it hasn't. Um, everything's open. Like, nobody's worried about it. I, so we were on a swinging website back in, like, uh, May, and somebody said, you know, I'm a little worried about COVID. And I'd say about after June or July, like, basically nobody cares anymore in the swinging community. Caliente is open. Secrets is open. Um, the, the swingers clubs in Tampa are open. Shit, the strip clubs are open. So, 2019 in the swinging community. <laughs> And has there been any time you've been to a swingers club and you met somebody and you either thought this was going to be phenomenal or maybe not, and it was either great or not so well? Oh, yes. <laughs> so we went to um, this resort, Caliente, I already mentioned earlier in Tampa, and we had mentioned on our show we were going to go to this resort. So this guy heard that we were going to be there, and he brought his girlfriend and this other uh, spinner chick, who's also on OnlyFans. So the three of them were there. So they approached us first and he was a huge fan of Brent's and, and everything. So we're like, okay, whatever. And, and he was cool he seemed cool. The chicks were cool. And there was a few other people we could have hooked up with, but we were like, well, fuck it. He's got two chicks, let's go with him. He spent the whole night asking Brent questions about the radio. Brent had to play with his girl and me because he was so busy asking Brent questions about the radio he completely wasted our time and uh we nothing ever ended up happening we just we basically told him like all right well we're going to see it um because all he wanted to do was ask questions it was very weird and it killed hours overnight have you guys ever gotten any flack from like conservative people because you're so open and so straightforward with sex and huh. everything huh. we get shit from conservatives and liberals exactly alike in fact sometimes it depends on the day sometimes the liberals are worse and sometimes the conservatives are worse and we're we're like we're all about freedom we're libertarians i don't give a shit what you do with your life man if you're not hurting me i don't care i'm not gonna waste my time on you but um a lot of these people i'd say the north eastern liberals and uh the southern conservatives they both uh, like to rip us a new one because the liberals are clutching their pearls and the conservatives are praying going, oh my God, they're going to hell. So it's, it's hilarious. And they both think the other one is worse and they're equally as bad. As far as judging, as far as judging goes, they're equally as bad. Do you ever get any flack from the people who own the radio stations and stuff that maybe you guys should tone it down? No. Mm -mm. Actually, no. <laughs> 